What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're taking a look at an end game hunter build that just might surprise you with how powerful it really is because it certainly surprised me. Today we're checking out a strand hunter build featuring the Sir Tarachne's facade. This is definitely an odd looking exotic and one that I wasn't expecting to perform as well in the end game of Destiny. Sir Tarachne's facade comes with the acrobat's focus. This grants you Woven Mail whenever using your grapple, and when Woven Mail is active, you'll receive bonus flinch resistance. This is a benefit that can certainly come in handy when in Crucible and when you're trying to dish out maximum precision damage while taking a lot of heavy fire. I was hesitant at first to try this exotic, because like so many other hunters, the Lucky Pants, the Assassin's Cow, and the Star Eater Scale kept my attention. And in comparison, the Sir Tarachne's facade just didn't seem as good. But I was wrong. Like, really, really wrong. This exotic is absolutely incredible. It offers just as much survivability as an Assassin's Cow build or an Omnioculus build, but with the deadliness of a Liar's Handshake build. To get the full advantage of its benefits though, you'll have to adjust your playstyle just a bit into a more aggressive, Titan-like style. But I promise you, it's going to pay off big, even in Master and Grandmaster level content. Because with this build, you'll have a constant source of health regeneration and damage resistance, along with some very overpowered abilities at your disposal. Since Acrobat's focus is going to give us Woven Mail every time we grapple, we want to be able to grapple as much as possible. And to clarify what I mean when I say that we want to grapple as much as possible, we want to weaponize our grapple as much as possible. Because with our grapple, we have an aggressive charged attack that deals area damage and unravels nearby enemies. And now, thanks to the Sertarachne's facade, we'll have protection while performing these. And with how we have our subclass and armor set up, you'll be grappling more than Spider-Man, performing crazy tricks that annihilate your enemies quick. So let's jump into what makes this build tick. Starting with our choice in Strand Fragments and Aspects, using the Widow Silk Aspect will give us two Grapple Charges, which means two Charged Melee Attacks. Since Widow Silk causes Grappling to create Grapple Tangles, and we've also got the Beyblades going, which is just another form of a Tangle that's on the go, we'll have constant sources to recharge our Grapple and a great way to maneuver around during engagements. Since Tangles and Grapple Tangles will instantly recharge our Grapple, we'll be able to perform several charged melee attacks in short succession, which is going to be a lot of damage dealt to any enemy when they're also getting smacked around by those Beyblades. These Whirling Maelstroms are going to be created every time a Tangle is destroyed, and just like our charged melee, these will unravel targets, causing Strand Threadlings to release and deal damage over time which is in addition to any damage dealt by the Beyblade itself. There's a few other ways that we're going to be able to create tangles, one of which is our actual charged melee, the Threaded Spike. This severs enemies, reducing their damage output and creating a tangle at their corpse. There is a 12 second cooldown on our ability to create tangles, but that's only affecting tangles created by our abilities, and it does not account for tangles created by weapons like the Quicksilver Storm, which provides its own method of creating tangles. Or there's the Navigator, which can create a grapple point every 30 seconds through its alternate mode. There's also artifact mods that can have an impact over your ability to create tangles. So when Season of the Wish starts, be sure to take advantage of any artifact mods that help generate tangles. When it comes to our choice in our dodging ability, Gambler's Dodge is ultimately going to be the more sensible option since it recharges your melee ability when performed around enemies. Personally though, I'm slightly more fond of having my weapons reloaded, especially when going into DPS situations. As far as fragments go, we're using Thread of Warding. This provides us with a secondary source of re-engaging woven mail, which you'll need when going up against enemies in high level content. So now we'll get woven mail activated when grappling and when collecting orbs, which means that that 60% damage resistance bonus is going to be re-engaged every time we get woven mail. We're using Thread of Ascent because it automatically reloads our equipped weapon when grappling. 
This way, after you smack those enemies with your grappling melee attack, you can follow that up with a fully loaded weapon. We're using Thread of Generation, which grants a small amount of grenade energy whenever we deal damage of any kind. Since we have Beyblades adding to our damage, and since grappling melee attacks hit multiple targets at once, this will be an especially effective fragment to use. And the last fragment that we're using is Thread of Fury. This grants melee energy whenever enemies are damaged by a tangle, which also includes our Beyblade. This grants between 10% on low ranking enemies, and as much as 30% on high ranking enemies. Having our threaded spike back more often will help reduce the damage that we take, since any enemy affected by Sever is going to deal 40% less damage. Switching gears and moving over to armor, let's talk about what armor stats you should be focusing towards. The main two areas would have to be Discipline and Strength so that you can regain your grapple charge and threaded spikes faster. When we look at in-game content though, we need to ensure that we have high resilience and if possible, high recovery. But both of these can be made up for with the use of font mods like Font of Restoration and Font of Endurance. When it comes to armor mods, we want to generate orbs, and we want to recharge our abilities as fast as possible. So on our helmets, we're using siphon mods and hands-on mods so that we get our super energy back faster when defeating enemies with our standard charged melee attack or our grapple. On our gloves, we're using grenade kickstart so that when we're on our last grapple charge and it gets used, our armor charges will convert into grenade energy. We're using Heavy Handed so that our charged grappling attack will create orbs, and so will our standard threaded spike. The only chest mod that's really going to be beneficial to this build would be Charged Up, so that when Grenade Kickstart is activated, more energy will be transferred. But honestly, when in in-game content, I'd rather just have resistance mods equipped. On our legs, we're using Better Already, so that along with Woven Mail, when we collect orbs, we will get our health back. We're using Innervation so that Orb Collection grants 10% additional grenade energy. And we're also using Absolution so that when we do collect an orb, a small amount of energy is going to be distributed to every ability. And lastly, on our class item, we're using the Reaper mod to create additional orbs. And by using the Distribution mod as well, we'll gain a small amount of energy to every ability whenever we perform our dodge near enemies. No build is complete without a full weapon loadout, and as I mentioned before, the Quicksilver Storm and the Navigator are the two main exotics to fit this build. Honestly, the Quicksilver Storm makes for a much better choice in most every situation, but when running the Navigator, there's no better weapon to use than either the Abyss Defiant or the Word of Crota. Both of these weapons come from Crota's End and have the Cursed Thrall Intrinsic Trait, which causes a Cursed Thrall style explosion similar to Dragonfly, giving us another form of damage that we can use against our enemies. Abyss Defiant also has what no other auto rifle does, and that's Heal Clip, giving 60 points of health instantly when reloading. A tremendous benefit when in the middle of combat. But the one that I prefer the most is the word of Crota when it has destabilizing rounds and Repulsor Brace. Repulsor Brace works in tandem with Woven Mail, providing you with an extra layer of protection, making you that much harder to kill, so it's perfect. Plus you get the benefits of volatile enemies, making big groups of enemies go away very, very quickly. And when it comes to our choice in Heavy, there's none other than the Legend itself, the Circular Logic. With Envious Assassin and Vorpal, this thing spits out nanotech rockets, just like the Quicksilver Storm, which will cause a lot of additional damage. And since we're using an exotic primary, you'll be able to create plenty of Heavy and Special Ammo. Ultimately, when it comes to pairing up the Navigator and the Quicksilver Storm, it's going to be in your best interest to match your energy and heavy weapons to whatever your current activity calls for, and whatever champions that you may be encountering. To bring further synergy to our build, weapons with Demolitionist, Pugilist, or Golden Tricorn are going to be very helpful. And with that, I think we've covered just about everything there is on how this incredible Sir Tarachne's facade build works, and why you should give it a try. 
I will be leaving a Destiny Item Manager link in the description below, so be sure to check that out if you need to make a quick copy of today's build. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this Hunter build, and if you've already given it a try or not, so let us know down in the comments below. Thank you as always for checking out today's video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian, just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran, just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below, and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.